For many years, I did something to pay the rent that I'm not very proud of. It's euphemistically called event entertainment, but let's call it what it really is. I was a party clown for the witch and famous. <laughs> but I didn't start out that way. Flashback to Easter Sunday, 1975. I was a young, idealistic actor who wanted to change the world with my art. So, of course, I was dressed in a tacky Easter Bunny costume, selling overpriced paper flowers on the Easter parade in Fifth Avenue. Throngs of mom and kids pushed to get a photo with me. Just then, this old guy with long hair, a cape, and a Salvador Dali mustache steps up. His eyes fix on me. And he says, in a very thick accent, Booze Booney, you come to my party. Give your flowers to my guests. I pay you. Sure, I say. Where's the party? Trade the weeks. Trade the weeks? No, trade the weeks. Trade the weeks? Trade the weeks, trade the weeks. Hotel Plaza, 8 o'clock. Okay, I got the Hotel Plaza at 8 o'clock. And then it hits me. What if this guy really is Salvador Dali? So I ask him his name. He snorts angrily. Salvador Dali! The subtext being, you stupid shit! <laughs> and with a flourish of his cape, he spins, he spins around and disappears. So the party is actually at Trader Vic's. <laughs> Thank you. And Dali has rented the joint for the evening. With a few hours to kill, I pose for the masses on Fifth Avenue, telling everybody what I'm going to be doing later that evening. One middle-aged woman says, You are giving flowers to Salvador Dali's guests? What a coincidence! I love Salvador Dali, and I own a flower shop! <laughs> where, where does she say the party was in again? I quickly lose her, and kill time until it's five minutes to eight. I'm in the lobby of the plaza, ready to enter the party when I hear that voice. Yo! It's her with her fucking flowers. I hop step through the lobby with her hot on my tail, uh, trail. I run down some stairs and I spot two women dressed like Chiquita Banana. <laughs> two women. They wave me over and into the room. One watches until the coast is clear. But before I can leave, this guy bounds in from another door and says, It's Easter! This is perfect! You've got to come on stage with me now! Turns out I'm in the dressing room of the off-Broadway hit El Grande de Coca-Cola. And the MC wants me to make a guest appearance in the show. Talk about bad timing. When will I get another chance to perform off Broadway? But if I do, I could blow Dolly's party altogether. Bad ah, Dolly's bigger than off Broadway, so I dash off to the party. Once there, Dolly sits at one end of the table, a very long table, and I sit at the other end, on the back of my chair, chewing a carrot and guzzling my ties. <laughs> I hop off to give the first flower to his wife, Gala Modum Dali. Then I give the other flowers to his guests. Dolly holds court as we eat and walks over from time to time to hand me a carrot, pet my head and grunt, Oh, booze booney, oh. <laughs> Then a paparazzo orders me to strike some questionable poses with Dali, like on my knees, kissing the end of Dali's ornate walking stick. As the evening wears down, I see Dali and Gala heading for the door. Hey, I, you said you'd pay me for my flowers. <laughs> Dali grunts. Come to the Hotel St. Regis at noon tomorrow. I pay you. So the next day, I'm sitting in his suite with a new bunch of Dali worshippers. Finally, Dali enters and orders me to kneel in the <laughs> middle of the floor. He's holding a homemade hat full of something. And he circles me for a minute while everyone gets out their cameras. Then he stops, behind me. As if on cue, everyone points their Nikons at the Easter Bunny. I'm nervous to the point of twitching, which is good for my character. <laughs> I scratch my nose, my ears. I do the Hannibal Lecter sound. Uh, actually, it's more like Bugs Bunny, but I change it slightly so my audience won't fault me for being too derivative. <laughs> Still, nothing happens, suddenly. In my peripheral vision, I spot him holding something over my head. What the hell's going on? The answer comes as he dumps his hat out, pouring a stream of gold coins. The coins hit my head and fall to the floor around me. The cameras flash wildly. Trusting my actor's instinct, I make a choice. I reach down and pick up a gold coin and sniff it. It turns out to be chocolate Easter candy. <laughs> Dolly barks a warning. <laughs> Booze Bunny, just one. Not good for you. I'm then informed that Dali no longer paints on canvas. In his later years, he's taken to doing action paintings, and I have just been painted by Dali. 
Not just painted, but anointed with gold. <laughs> the symbolism is too much. Maybe this rich and famous thing will rub off on me. Maybe it's in the stars. It's in the gold. It's in the Dali painting of me. <laughs> but it wasn't. Dali's words, just one, not good for you, turned out to be more than just a warning about the dangers of chocolate. I also took it to be a caution against worshipping gold, and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because no matter how many fabulously wealthy people I was destined to entertain, no matter how many extravagantly glamorous parties I would perform at, riches and fame, alas, were not to be mine. However, as it turns out, I do have one hell of a chocolate habit. 